Hey everyone, this is Joe from the Joe and Zo Pod, and uh, looking forward to talking some cards. We have a few TTMs. These are going to be the first TTMs from the missing box. Talked about in a previous video how I lost the box full of a bunch of cards, including some TTMs, and I just got it back. So we are finally going to go through those. So first one over here is out of Memphis, Tennessee. And it is Mr. Sammy Smith. Let's get out of there, get some good light. He signed one of one in 52 days. He was a running back who played from 1989 to 1992. He played for the Dolphins and the Broncos. Uh, career totals, uh, his career rushing totals, he had 532 carries, 1,881 yards rushing, and 15 touchdowns. He was drafted a ninth overall by the Dolphins in the 1989 draft. Um, he had a whole bunch of legal issues uh, in the 90s after his retirement, um, which I won't get into here. His best season, uh, he had 226 carries for 831 rushing yards and eight touchdowns, along with 11 catches for 134 receiving yards and one touchdown. And overall, he was uh, quite a disappointment for the Dolphins um, after being drafted ninth overall, only playing four years total. Um, and that is the story of Sammy Smith. I'm happy to get that one back. Okay, next one comes out of the Capital District, Washington, D.C. And it is Mr. Randy Knorr. He signed one of one in 60 days. He was a catcher who played from 1991 to 2001 in the major leagues. He played for Toronto, Houston, uh, the Marlins, the Rangers, and the Expos. He was drafted in the 10th round of the 1986 draft by the Blue Jays. Uh, career numbers, a negative 1.6 war, a 224 batting average, 24 homers, 88 RBIs, and a 660 OPS. Uh, he won the World Series uh, with the Blue Jays both of their uh, 90s World Series year, 92 and 93. Um, he uh, was not really on the team for 92. Uh, he was kind of carried on the roster and, and won the world and got a ring with that. But 93, he was a uh, main member of the team and uh, won that World Series as well. Um, there's no real uh, best season for him. Um, he wasn't even, I would say, a backup catcher. Um, the most games he played in one season in his 10 years was 45. Uh, for the most part, he bounced up and down between the majors and the minors uh, every year that he was in the majors. Um, and like I said, he retired in 2001. He did play uh, in parts of 10 major league seasons, but as you saw, his numbers were not um, uh, very large. Um, and uh, he's actually been a coach in the Nationals organization uh, since 2008, um, which I guess is why this card came out of DC. Um, but that was a nice one to get back from Mr. Knorr. All right, our third return today is from Metroplex, Michigan. And it is Mr. Chris Hoyles, Orioles legend. He signed two of two in 73 days. He played from 1989 to 1998. He was a catcher, as you can see clearly from this card. Uh, he played his entire career with the Orioles. Uh, he was drafted actually in the 19th round of the 86th draft by the Detroit Tigers um, and then was traded to the Orioles in 1988 for Fred Lynn. Career numbers, good offensive numbers for a catcher. He has a 23.5 war, a 262 average, 151 home runs, 449 RBIs, and a, a large OBS of 883. Lots of career tidbits for Chris Hoyles. Let's go through some of them. Uh, career tidbit number one. On May 17th, 1996, he hit uh, what we call an ultimate grand slam, which is that your team is down three in the bottom of the ninth, um, and he hit a grand slam to win the game. And not only did he uh, do it in, with, in the bottom of the ninth, but he also did it with two outs and a 3-2 count. So really the ultimate of ultimate grand slams, the one that we always talk about uh, pretending in our backyards as we're growing up. Uh, Chris Hoyles actually did that in real life. Uh, number two, uh, in 1997, 
he finished with a fielding percentage of 1,000, which was in 90, 99 games, which is uh, very impressive. Uh, overall, he was a pretty decent catcher. He was a better hitter than he was a catcher. But uh, as we go through, you'll see that he um, that he had some good catching numbers as well. Um, in 1998, on August 14th, he hit two grand slams in one game. Um, and uh, honestly, the reason he uh, played so short, he retired at the age of 33, he had numerous injuries. Um, catchers in general are very susceptible to injuries, um, and he was a prime example of that. Um, to the point where he could not even DH. He was playing a little first base at the end of his career with the Orioles um, to protect him from the catching, but his, his back um, was in such bad condition that he could not even um, handle first base or even DHing. Um, uh, as I said before, he has some pretty decent uh, catching numbers um, and offensive numbers for a catcher. Um, some examples of that. Um, he led the uh, American League for catchers in fielding percentage four times in his career. Uh, never won a gold glove. Um, currently, his fielding percentage ranks ninth all time uh, among catchers. Um, and in terms of uh, offensively, he has, like I said, he has an 837 OPS career. That's seventh all time for catchers. Um, and a 467 slugging percentage is actually 11th all time among catchers. Um, and the final tidbit from his career, he caught a combined no-hitter on July 13th, 1991 uh, with the Orioles, um, which was actually the last time they threw a no-hitter until this past season uh, when John Means did it. Last, uh, last bit, his best season was in 93, again with the Orioles. Um, he hit 310 with 29 homers, 82 RBIs, um, a 1,001 OPS, and finished 16th in the MVP voting. Um, so pretty impressive for Chris Hoyles. Um, and let's center that a little bit so you guys can see all those cards. And let's do one more. Why not? Coming out of Phoenix, Arizona, it is Mr. Floyd Bannister. What a signature on that card, huh? Uh, he signed one of one in 66 days. He played from 1977 to 1992, a very extensive career. He was a starting pitcher with Houston, Seattle, the White Sox, the Royals, the Angels, and the Rangers. Um, he was drafted originally in 1973 in the third round by Oakland, um, but then he went to college and he ended up uh, entering the draft again in 1976, where he was actually the number one overall pick. Uh, career numbers, he definitely filled up the stat sheet. Um, he had a 26.4 war. He had a career 134 and 143 record a 4.06 ERA, and a 1.32 whip. He made the All-Star Game in 1982, and he finished fourth in the Rookie of the Year um, when he was eligible for that. Um, so, uh, you know, his career, again, number one overall pick. The numbers obviously don't back up that selection. Um, his career has a lot of strikeouts. also gave up a lot of home runs. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, a disappointing career for a number one overall pick, but a pretty decent career and a long career um, for the average MLB player. Um, what would be his best season? Most people would probably say his 82 season um, when he made the All-Star game. I'm going to go with his 1983 season um, when he was with the White Sox, when he went 16-10 and 10 with a 3.35 ERA in 217 and a third innings and had a 1.2 whip. And it was very nice to get that back from Mr. Bannister. And that is our part one of the cards from the box. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please subscribe, share, like this video. Uh, please send us an email, joeandzopod at gmail.com with your comments and questions and suggestions. You can also comment down below. Um, we look forward to hearing from all of you guys. All right, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching and looking forward to the next time we can talk some cards.